really needs no introduction, but in case any of you have had a coma for about a decade and managed to make it to the show, uh, Adam Savage is an in Woo! is an industrial design and special effects designer, fabricator, actor, educator, and television personality. He's known as co-host of the Discovery Channel television series Mythbusters and Unchained Reaction. He currently is the editor-in-chief of Tested.com. His model work has appeared in major films, including Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones, and The Matrix Reloaded. Please welcome Adam Savage to the stage. Thank you. Are you my ASL interpreter now? I am sorry for what I'm about to do to you. <laughs> there we go. Ah, there we are, hi. Ladies and gentlemen, the shocking discovery of so-called Niven Ball's cohesion by Waffenheimer and Krull and their complex pleuroplasto geometrics of their preferred configuration has yielded several exciting new fields of study. <laughs> oh, you're in for a long one. <laughs> Both within and without the poorly understood field of Niven Ball stacking. The current thinking on Niven Balls, just to get us all on the same page, is that they are simply left-hand spin desiphotonic Mebus waves interlaced at penambulate levels. It's further thought that these supified nucleolattice objecto mulae crenellations of space-time are what afford us the ability for the first time in history to redirect gravitrametrons. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> now, if you have read your Shankmeyer, you know there's a competing and ever more popular theory that says that testicular planes are simply statistical ephemera brought about by a particularly noisy data set. He, su <laughs> he suggests that Bash and Ball back in 1968 weren't picking up ultraphotonic Mobius waves at all, but rather the errant data they were getting suggested something far weirder and quotidian at the same time. He suggests that the redirection of the gravitrametrons is what he refers to as a reverse refraction brought about by a subspace suspension of muon cobra cones facing sideways in time, of course. This lateral stimulation of retropolarized space-time seems to be both entropic as well as depressed. <laughs> While we eagerly await further peer review, the fact remains that we retain the ability to achieve nearly infinite beeblest subcursions of space-time even if we don't fully understand it. I recognize this is all a gross oversimplification. <laughs> to put it more simply, we can now reflect gravity. The initial research, the initial research was a highly, highly publicized public-private partnership between the United International Consortium for Non-Standard Weapons Research, or UICNWR, and Big Diet. But the relationship has hit a snag. The UICNWR has currently put all further government research on hold while they look for survivors from the Hatchling, Colorado incident. <laughs> they are pretty sure that all bodies and body parts are accounted for, the one problem being they have found an extra severed hand. <laughs> one more than they should have by their count. This anomaly could be explained by a mathematically rare but still predictable fever gate caused by fluctuations in a passing Nambo galaxy wave. Now, Shaylord's... <laughs> Shaylord's tests, as well as Bradbinder and Fisk's numbers, seem to bear this out. At any rate, they've put their tools down for the moment while they take fingerprints to determine just whose hand it might be. Big Diet has their own ideas, of course. They announced a plan to develop belts that can make their wearer weigh less should they choose to feel better while standing on a scale. They see a brisk market in what they're calling their next-to-nothing belts. This utility is uncontroversial, but considering that the central energy source of the belt's dialostropedic pattern driver is powered by a mandrake tunnel of tacky ormatrons held in place with an <laughs> irradiated ray... That is perfect. <laughs> held in place with an irradiated ray of tempo, crystal, and boron disks, there are some genuine concerns. I mean, this is a fine setup for lab work, but those who've worked with these useful but unpredictable power systems are fearful of unintentional femtosecond shifts in the data time field, which can, of course, in a worst case scenario, lead to tunning, tunneling busyons. Suffice it to say that there are differences on both sides of the fence. Industry believes that we don't have to understand Niven Ball stacks before making their incredible properties, properties available to the public. 
Science, on the other hand, is concerned with a general collapse of the subcohesion of all space-time, <laughs> leading to a total loss of all information ever gathered by probing sentience across the galaxy. These concerns have been voiced through proper channels of the Protection of American Industry Department, There you go. But they have been dismissed as fear-mongering. The department's mission is to curtail what they call the scourge of extra science. <laughs> because, as they say, the customer is always right. Or, as we might put it, a capital blazer array can never resolve the fractional eddies of mumble veins without at least a non-trivial loss of nanodinkles. Now, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Well, <laughs> uh, judges, <laughs> down so, at the bottom, Matthew. So if there's too much left-hand spin in the region of your nothing belt, could that lead to testicular torsion? <laughs> it can. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable. Thank you for correctly pronouncing testicular. <laughs> Uh, are there any additional questions? Katie. I had, I had a question. So, so uh, of course, uh, in a gravitating system, the specific heat is, is negative, and so the entropy actually increases as the gravity uh, increases in that system. And so this, uh, this particular uh, device, by changing the gravitational uh, rules, seems like it could have interesting implications for the heat death of the universe. And I was wondering if you could comment on that. <laughs> I weirdly feel both smarter and dumber at that question. <laughs> smarter that you've asked it, but dumber in my ability to answer it. No, it is a concern. <laughs> Do we have any additional questions? Uh, my source is telling me that Uber is actually paying for this research. <laughs> Would you care to comment on their applications they have in mind? Uh, yes, they, they <laughs> there are plenty of applications you can fill out, but they're only going to answer the, uh, the, 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 uh, oh, I can't bring my politics into this. I mean, I want to, my brain is just drawing a total blank right now. No, it's the Koch brothers, that's who's doing it. So, you know, it's good science. <laughs> All right, on that note, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. A hand for this tremendous Woo! gentleman.